Hey, I'm Zach Nabs. I'm doing a movie critique slash review for my interactive media arts class for Assiniboine Community College. Um, I'm doing a movie review for three Quentin Tarantino films, Pulp Fiction, Inglorious Bastards, and Django Unchained. Okay. First up is we have is the target demographic. The target demographic of these three films is based more on mature audiences only, as for Quentin Tarantino doesn't really make children's movies. Every one of his movies usually has involved some form of um, drug use, lots of violence, mild racial slurs depending on which movie you're watching. Um, yeah, there's usually a bunch of sexual references in a lot of his films, or sex scenes. Depending on which movie you're watching, there's rape. Um, as for the set design in all of his films, they've all been done perfectly. No one really skipped any detail while doing them. Like Nothing looks half-assed. It, all the sets have been designed perfectly to match each scene. Everything looks perfect. Um, the lighting and space used for all his movies is fine. It's very good. When they're sitting on in scenes like in Glorious Bastards, when they're sitting around a table, there's close-up dramatic zooms on faces, and the lighting under them makes everything look more even more dramatic than it actually is. So that's cool. They also do this in Pulp Fiction, where they're um, interrogating a person, and they have wide-angle shots depicting everything, and it's it looks really nice. It's beautifully done. Um, for costume design, um, whoever designs the costumes for Quentin Tarantino has done a, a an above average job. <laughs> Everything looks no great. Glorious bastards. Everyone's in their uniform for Nazi Germany, and not that I guess yeah. I, I guess by an acting standpoint, all the everything works out perfectly. Same thing for Pulp Fiction. The suits make the two main actors look really professional. And in Django Unchained, their outfits match the time era, and it's really cool. I know there's a lot of hillbillies and racial slurs in that movie, but it's fine. It's still a great movie. Um, the actors in each one of these films have... They're all really good. They're all very famous actors. In all three movies of Django Unchained, Pulp Fiction, and Glorious Bastards, um, Samuel L. Jackson is in each one. With, I guess, the minor exception for Glorious Bastards, where he's not an actual character, he's a narrator. So a couple scenes he'll show up, well not show up, but you'll hear his voice. And in Ingle, um, Django Unchained, he plays the main protagonist, one of the main protag antagonists, um, friends slash servants named Steven, and in Pulp Fiction, he's one of the main characters named Jules, and he's really good in that movie, it's awesome. But there was many actors that went through, um, all of Quentin Tarantino's movies, John Travolta, was one of them. I mentioned Samuel Jackson. Eli Roth was in Inglorious Bastards along with Brad Pitt. I don't know why. Brad Pitt was also in Inglorious Bastards. For continuing on with this film, we also have Christoph Waltz. And I believe the film Inglorious Bastards kickstarted his career, if I'm not mistaken. Um, a man named Martin Wutk. Wutk? It's German played Hitler in this film, and kudos for him for playing Hitler. I don't know why anyone would ever want to play Hitler, but he did it, got paid really good money. In Pulp Fiction, the actors in there were, or well, the more popular actors were, Samuel L. Jackson, Uma Thurm, Bruce Willis, John Travolta, and Quentin Tarantino himself. He's also in Inglorious Bastards, and he is also in Django Unchained. Now in Django Unchained, we all... For actors, we also have Christoph Waltz. He is one of the main characters in there as well, named King Schultz. So I guess Quentin Tarantino liked him enough in Django and I mean, 
I liked him enough in Inglorious Bastards to move him from m main protagonist, our main antagonist, to the protag to one of the protagonists. So that's cool. Jamie Foxx was in there. He played Django. Carrie Washington played Django's wife. Like I said earlier, Samuel Jackson played Stephen, which is one of the main antagonist's friends. The main antagonist was a man named Calvin Candy, and he was played by Leonardo DiCaprio. And I said this before, Quentin Tarantino likes to do self-inserts of himself in each one of his films, and each one is just really, really funny. In Pulp Fiction, his character is a minor sub-role, which plays a mild part in the film. It's, it's almost damn near insignificant. It's just one of Jules' friends, and they get cleaned up, and it's a funny scene. And in Django, he gets blown up because he's holding dynamite and he gets shot. In Inglorious Bastards, he's not in the main cast. There's a sub-movie that happens in it called Nation's Pride. And the only way to actually see him in that movie is uh, by either watching the video Nation's Pride on YouTube or watching it on the DVD because he's one he's in the first scene, I believe, in that movie and he's one of the soldiers that just gets shot immediately. And the camera shots in each one of these films have been odd at times and greatly appreciated. There are many shots that have been amazing and some that I thought could have been done slightly better, but it is Quentin Tarantino. I love his work. It's amazing. A few shots. It, he likes to show the why. He likes to show the background. He likes being dramatic with his camera shots, which means slow dramatic zooms. Um, and then like just zooming in on faces really fun dramatically and then stare downs. I didn't review this movie, but I know there's a lot of that in the movie Kill Bill. Just close up zooms to their faces and such. And then just random cutaway scenes, like Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction is like 80% random segments of film just cut up and then placed in random order. But that's the way he told that story, and it was really funny. It worked out perfectly. And in Glorious Bastards, they have more of the battle scenes, which was just close-ups to like the main characters with firearms, and then they're shooting them off, and cut to like... I don't know if the actors who are being shot at just ridiculously amount of blood and bullets coming out. Not that I'm complaining because it looks hilarious, but it's just, it's awesome. It's, it's the way he does his work. I know it works out awesomely. Same thing for Django and Chain for camera shots. He, there's a lot of, uh, it's shot in the 1800s, 1850s something. And there's a, there's a lot of um, mountain ranges where they are, where they are. And there's a lot of great background shots when they're when he was filming for that movie, so he liked to get the background while with the characters because it enhanced their character. It made them seem like they belong. Um, as for the narrative structure in each one of his films, starting with Pulp Fiction, the narrative structure for this one it's uh, more of um, the movie here, and then it cut down into like smaller segments and then randomly placed in order to tell a story in reverse, like sideways and up and down. You have to sit through the whole movie to actually figure out what happened. And it, first time I ever watched it, like this was years ago, it took me, I don't know, I have to watch it a couple times, but now it's just like, it's one of my favorite movies. Anyways, and for Inglorious Bastards, the narrator there, it's told kind of like book, like it's not all over the place like um, Pulp Fiction. It has like chapters one, two, three, and four. I think there's a five, fifth one, but I can't remember. And for small narrative detail, explaining parts, it's be it'd be Samuel Jackson reading, and that was pretty cool. And in Django Unchained, their narrative structure was more of a. It was there, but it wasn't as prominent as Pulp Fiction or Inglorious Bastards. They just kind of panned away for like, or not panned away. They cut away to some other random scene, explain mild stuff, and then come immediately back. So there wasn't as much narration for that film. And now the mood set through all these things, each one usually has their own specific theme or mood. For Pulp Fiction, it was more of a dark gloom slash comedy, 
and yeah, it was very funny, plus serious. Same thing with Inglorious Bastards and Django, that I think that's the way Quentin Tarantino likes to do his movies. Have it very super serious and then immediately cut to something hilarious and have it be even more funny because you're not really expecting it. Even something that's supposed to be serious like cutting someone down with a machine gun, the way they show them dying is hilarious because there's always like, I don't know, the way Quentin Tarantino makes look is like, his skin is like that thin and then the rest of your body is just full on blood because that's the way you get shot and it's just mouths. And it's, it's good, it's funny. Um, so all the general mood of each movie that he's made is dark humor, com dark humor, comedy, serious, and that's about it. For the storyline and script in each one, each each film has been greatly, uh, there's put a, been, he put a lot of thought into it. It wasn't just like, oh, I need to make a movie about Nazis and people killing them. Let's just do every stereotype ever. No, he put a lot of thought into it, put a lot of character development, kick-started a man's career. Um, Storyline and script, everything was written out wonderfully, I said. There was no details skip. <sighs> yep. Didn't skip anything, everything looked fine. Another director comparison. Uh, comparing Quentin Tarantino to each one of his films. For, let's say for Pulp Fiction was one of his earlier works, so... Comparing him to Inglourious Bastards, which was released in 2009. He, I guess he could say his creative thing changed a little bit because you know people usually change to change up their uh, their um scripts a bit and their directing of said film but i guess they were more the same because it's still quentin tarantino and his films usually have the same thing going on for them kick ass save the day go home happy you might lose a couple of your favorite characters along the way, but it's uh, all cool. Same thing with Django Unchained. You love the main character, um, Christoph Waltz, who's the good guy in this film, for, as opposed to the bad guy from Inglorious Bastards. He, 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 he dies in Django Unchained. Big shotgun blast to the chest. Killed one of the main bad guys, though, in the process of doing it. Um, Inglorious Bastards most of the bastards get like killed at the final scene they take out most of they kind of win the war they eliminate all of like everyone or the higher powers in nazi germany they even take out hitler by machine gun and like explosives but not before they like destroy him it's kind of funny and pulp fiction you lose one of the main characters you lose um, Vincent Vega, who is played by John Travolta. He gets oozied from Bruce Willis. It's still a good movie to watch, though. So don't, don't, uh, <laughs> don't not watch it because of that. Okay, well that was my movie slash critique for the three Quentin Tarantino films. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed.